Welcome to part two of three part civil 3D beginners video series. If you missed part one, then click here to check it. And if you want to learn civil 3D right from scratch with full length project based courses, then click the link in the description of the video or pinned comment. With that, let's get started. Okay, so now that we have a little bit of an understanding about the interface and the settings and how civil 3D works with styles, let's kind of get our road done. Let's first talk about project management. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is this existing ground surface that we have. So this surface came from our surveyors. If you want to kind of take a look at it real quickly, this is the existing conditions. You can see here there's a road. We're going to put our road over here because we're doing a bypass. Uh, the cool thing about this project is this. This is actually completed. If I were to turn on my geolocation and we'll set the aerials on here, you will see that this project is already done. This was uh, completed in construction about uh, two, three years ago. And this is a project that I had worked on. And if we zoom in here, let's just turn this off real quickly. We'll just isolate it and hide it. You'll see that this project is actually done. This is pretty cool, right? So this is the existing conditions and we're gonna actually do this road and basically you know, so you can see kind of how fast this gets done in Civil 3D. Let's go ahead and just bring our surface back here, all right? Okay, so what we need to now do is I need to set my working folder to the location of where my project is located. So my projects are located in here. We'll just click Select Folder. Now what it does by default is it finds the first folder within that folder that has an underscore shortcuts folder. Okay, but what I want to do is I want to put this in my project folder. So I'm going to right click here and click on new data shortcuts project folder. Now all I have to do is type the name of the main part of my folder, which is called three part tutorial. So I'll type that in here right now. So three dash part. All right, I'm not going to use a project template, but you could. Now I'm going to click OK here and watch what happens. Immediately, this updates with the location of where my project is going to be. So I'm going to open file location here. Let's open up my Windows Explorer. And as you can see, what it did was it created a folder called underscore shortcuts. And inside that folder is simply subfolders that allow me to contain the data shortcuts, which are simple XML files. They're literally just text files that point to the location of where the data reference is. So the drawing that we're going to be working in is in drawings. Okay. And then my references, which this is ex existing ground is located inside here. So now what I need to do is associate this file to the current project. I'll click okay here. You'll notice up here, it now shows that it's part of that project. And now I'm going to make a data shortcut for the existing ground surface so that I can bring it into my other project files. So if I expand surfaces and look at EG, there it is. And again, all that this does is it creates a simple little text file that points to the location of that surface. That is it. Now let's go ahead and begin our project. Now we're going to do everything else in this file. Normally I would create a separate alignment file, then make a data shortcut, and then maybe make separate model files and then data reference in all the other objects I would need. But just to get this tutorial done, let's just bring in the EG and let me back up here. Let me just show you what we're starting with. We are starting with nothing. And that's what I really want to show you here. I'm going to do a control A and if you look here at the properties, I've got five circles just to help me kind of get the alignments in there real quickly. Okay. But that's basically it here. So first off, let's associate this project to the current drawing, which is this part two drawing that we're in. Again, now you see it up here. And now I want my EG because I'm going to need that to see it for my profile. I don't need it to display. I don't really care. I'm going to set that to no display. Now let's go ahead and go to the AutoCAD reference and let's bring in my DWG, which is my topo file. Okay. This is the existing condition. Again, a surveyor located all the data for us so that we can see what needs to be done. So the background of this project is there were way too many trucks coming into this gas station in this area right here. And it was clogging up this intersection horribly. This is a DOT road. This is basically a state road. Okay. And they were 
telling the county, you have to take care of this. And so they hired an engineering firm to create a bypass road just for the trucks to enter and then come into this way. And that way they wouldn't clog up this entrance. They exited a different way as well. So they would come out this way and then just the exit's fine, but they cannot turn into this here. And that's the main purpose of this project. So as you can see, I've already drawn some circles to kind of guide me into creating my alignments and profiles and all that good stuff. All right. So basically let's create the mainline alignment first, and then we'll create the side road alignment here as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the Home tab, Create Design Panel, Alignment, Alignment Creation Tools. We'll call this one US-129 because that's the name of the road. Always start your stationing at 10 or 100 plus 00, so I'll just start at 100 plus 00. I've got my styles ready to go, label sets ready to go, click OK, and I'm off and running. I need one tangent as this is a straight road in this location, so I'm just going to do tangents. I'm going to go ahead and go to the center of this circle here. And I'm going to go to the center of this circle here. Again, this just guides me. But as you can see, I'm pretty much just going between the midpoint of the road to the midpoint of the road. That's it. All right. So that alignment is actually done now. So let's go ahead and go to alignment, alignment creation tools. And this road will be called Love's Bypass, as this is a Love's gas station. So Love's Bypass. And we'll start this one at 200 plus a pair. This way, you never repeat your stationing. Again, notice how it's getting its own layer because the settings are ready to go. It's got the default styles ready to go. Click OK. Now for this one, I'm going to create two tangents and then I'm going to fill it in between them. So I'll start at the center of this circle here. So I'll start at the center of this circle here. And we'll just go from here. And we'll go to the center of this circle here. Again, based upon the design criteria and the avoiding of all these utility poles, as you can see, it's a pretty major line here. That's how we initially designed this road. And then I'm going to go ahead and continue this. I'm going to go from here and I'm going to go perpendicular to my new alignment. Press escape. And now I've got my first tangent labeled, but this is not labeled yet because this is not connected. So let's go ahead and do a free curve fillet between two entities radius. We'll go ahead and select our first tangent, pick our second tangent, and then it's less than 180, press enter. And the radius I want is 250, press enter. And now I'm ready to go. And it's that simple. That's how you create alignments. Again, there are multiple ways to do things. As you can see by the alignment layout tool, there's a ton of these fixed floating free methodologies. You can even do spirals if you need to and so on. So now what we need to do is we need to create a profile for our alignment. So we'll create a service profile first. Uh, we're going to do this for both. So I want to add in the EG and I'll click draw and profile view. And I'm going to go ahead and pick the profile view that I want here, which is this one here. And we'll click next, next, next. Just go with the defaults. I don't want anything to be labeled. We're good. We'll just create the profile view. This is for US 129. Now, I want to do the same thing for the Love's Bypass. So we'll click on here, pick my alignment, we'll add in the EG, and then we'll go ahead and click on Draw and Profile View, and we'll click the style that I want, click Next, Next, we'll just create Profile View, and then we'll just put this one over here. So let's first design this one. So what I need to do first is I need to trace the roadway because we have to start from there. And then I'm going to have other locations where I have to trace as well. This is a pretty simple road. And basically what I need to do is to make sure it does not go above the maximum stage for this pond. So this pond is already here and the maximum stage is 154. So Civil 3D provides these really great tools called transparent commands where I can actually draw stuff in civil engineering. I just started the line command here and I want to start at 200, 0, 0, press enter. And I want an elevation of 154, press enter. And I'm going to press escape once because now I can use polar tracking to simply draw this line going straight across. This lets me know, do not get your profile below this elevation because the road will get wet. So let's go ahead and select my profile view and we'll go ahead and click on profile creation tools. I always give my proposed profiles an underscore. So underscore loves and we'll click on 
OK here. And for this here, I'll simply start just drawing tangents because I can change these afterwards. I want to start here and then basically I want to eventually I have to tie into this road here, but I also need a grade of 0.3%. So I'll go ahead and go to the transparent commands. I'll click on grade length and then I'll select my profile view. And the grade I want is negative 0.3. That's my minimum grade that I want. Now for a length, I don't know what that's gonna be. I can simply click in space. As you can see, it's letting me just draw that grade in there. And I'll just go ahead and click it and then press escape once. And then I will go ahead and snap to the end point of this location here, which is my center line. You'll see why in a second, why I'm not gonna care about the rest of this in the middle here, all right? Now for this, US 129, because I want to do intersection design, I actually have to trace it. It does not work with a surface profile, and that's okay. So let's go ahead and select this. We'll click on Profile Creation Tools, and we'll call this one underscore US 129. Press Enter. Notice how the Profile Layout Tools update. I will simply draw tangents, and I'm going to trace the surface profile here. So I'll trace this here. Let me turn off polar tracking and we'll just trace this. Okay, so of course I didn't want to trouble you guys with showing all that. So as you can see here, I have a completed profile, okay? And now what I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and turn off my topo because now we know exactly where everything needs to be. And what I wanna do is create an intersection at this location right here. So let's go to the Home tab, Intersection, Create Intersection. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Okay, so of course I went through and just created all these. I didn't want to bore you guys, you know, placing PIs all over the place. So that's all done. And now what I need to do is create an intersection at this location here where this alignment intersects that one, okay? So home tab, intersections, create intersection. All you have to do is zoom into the location and where this exists. We'll click here. It picks it up automatically. And notice how I have a setting that already gives it the right names that I want to. We'll click next here. There's my main line and my side road, which is important for priorities. If you go to offset parameters, you can change the width of the roads here, but we're good to go. And we'll go ahead and click on curb return parameters. And my radii that I want is 35. We're gonna have some truck traffic in here. So we wanna make these pretty, as large as we need to. And we'll click okay here. All right. And now we'll click next and I want to create a corridor. So we'll create a new corridor model. We're gonna use these defaults, but just so you know, you can change these to whatever custom assemblies you have for your project. Let's click create intersection. We'll press escape. Notice how it is basically done. That's how simple this is. Now, if I zoom in to the different spots where the assemblies are, you'll notice that some of these assemblies don't actually have the curb and gutter, which I may need them to have. So I've got this curb and gutter there, and I've got none over here. What you can do is very simply open up your tool palettes. So these are being used by the corridor model. And I can simply grab the sub-assembly that I want, go to the properties palette. I'll verify that it's set to left. As I always say, when you don't know what to do, look to the command line window. It says insert, replace, or detached. So I want to insert and I want to zoom in here and I'll go ahead and click over here and notice how it inserts the curb into that location there, okay? I could then press escape once and then zoom in here and continue the process and press escape. Now, as you can see though, the daylighting is not going to the right location. That's okay. Select your sub-assembly and simply click the move in the contextual ribbon, click up here and now it's over there. I'll do the same thing below here. Select my sub-assembly, click move, zoom in, click here, and now we're ready to go. Now, of course, I'm not done because I need this to be larger, right? I need this to go all the way down to the location of where I might do an intersection at this location. Just for time constraints, we're, we're gonna skip that. But as you can see here, the second I pick that grip, all I have to do is rebuild my corridor model, 
It automatically finds the targeted surface and everything. I can do the same exact thing with this one here. I'll go ahead and click here and I'll pull this all the way. Again, you would probably pick a station of where this needs to go. And I would do the same thing over here and pull this up over here. Now let's say though, I want to widen this side of the road. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this offset alignment that was generated from the intersection tool. So I'll go ahead and select it and I'm gonna pull this offset alignment all the way down to the beginning or somewhere past it. I'll do the same thing on this side here and we'll go ahead and select that and pull this down here. Now let's say just for this part of the intersection, I want to create a widening. I can simply select my offset alignment. I can click the plus sign here and notice how I now have a widening. I'll drag this widening to the station I want to go to. So let's say this has to go to 10500. I'll press enter. It automatically puts it at that location. I can then click these two buttons right here and click this button and then define where that taper needs to end. So I'll type in 10600, press enter, 100 feet later. And we'll do the same thing on this end here if I wanted to. Let's say end that widening. I would simply click here. And then I'll drag this one 12 feet. That's the width of my lane. And then we'll pick this location here. And this should be at, let's say, 111 plus a pair. We'll click here to expand those grips. And I'll pick here. And I want that to be 110. And now for this one here, I want this offset to be 24 feet. So I'll click on there, type 24, press enter. Now, here's the cool thing. Because the quarter model was done with the intersection tool, it already was targeting that offset alignment. You are done. Now, what I like to do in these instances is to select my quarter model and create a quarter surface. This way I can see it in 3D a little bit better to make sure everything's working good. We'll call this one road. This is my top links. I'll click the top one, click the plus sign, add as break line, go to boundaries, right click, quarter extends as boundary and click okay. And now if I press escape here and select my proposed surface and take this into the object viewer, as you can see, this is a completed road within 20 minutes. Now, would it need some tweaking and possible ditches or maybe something like that? Yes, of course it might. But you could go in and modify those very easily. Within a few minutes, you have your quarter model. This concludes tutorial two. I'll see you in the third one.